Hello to everyone watching this footage. It's Leviathan here again, and to start things off, I'm going to introduce myself to newcomers. I'm born high-functioning autistic, I'm obsessed with fiction, and I'm planning to make my own creative universe like the late Stanley did for his. This particular video is very exquisite, because I'm going to try something new that would help you guys with the visuals. I'm going to test out a video editor. And I hope I do it right, and I hope it boosts credibility in terms of social recognition, because that is one of the most important factors for my creations. For this particular video, I'm going to introduce a story that I've made years ago with my grandfather, my dad's dad to be exact. Something we, he and I have made together, and I decided that it would be best for me to show you right now. And just so you know, Grandpa Ho, I edited the, vid the story to make it make more sense. But trust me, I will make this work some way, somehow. I promise you that you will get credit for this. So thank you for everything and such. So I'll be telling you this particular thing. And I'll try my best to have the right illustrations be the only ones visible for you guys, but only when the time is nigh and only for the right particular points and such, you know? I hope you enjoy, and let's just start. Colossa and Friends Save America Created and copyrighted by Levi Abes, April 7, 2015 Location, Default Earth, Kenya, Africa, Voodoo's Tomb, Date, Present Day on a hot tropical day deep in the jungles of Kenya, and hidden behind some vines, is a mysterious stone doorway with a broken wooden door wide enough for two people, marked with ancient African runes. It frames an opening which at first appears uninhabitable. Through the opening, there are cobwebs and torches glowing faintly in the dark. Beyond the darkness is an ancient spiral staircase made of stone, magically bound as though it were metal. At the top of the stairs resides the bedroom of Voodoo, an ancient psychopathic witch doctor who appears much younger than her years. She current she's currently watching a magical mirror showing happy citizens from the United States walking along the streets of New York City. Urgh, she grunted. Those pathetic Americans are an irritating distraction that must be attended to before I could dominate this world. The last time they defeated me, it's only because my armies have mediocre power. But now, I shall grant them with far better war tactics. My zombies shall have better minds and durability. And my ex-soldiers shall be better with their improved weapons and armor. Voodoo then summoned her golem sidekick with a loud, Clay! Voodoo had created Clay in her cauldron room nearby. She used her dark magic to construct him from materials that she placed in the cauldron and produced a loyal sidekick made of solid clay that is extremely durable, though he isn't immortal. Clay appears in Voodoo's room in his statue form, with rough humanoid features and answers. Yes, my master. Voodoo then says, Prepare the armies for our next mission. We shall transport them through two portals to both New York City and Washington, D.C., you and I shall storm the National Capitol building, and after those foolish Americans get dethroned, we shall no longer have any tormenting struggles with conquering the entire globe. Unknown to Voodoo and Clay, a pair of Blue Man Clan spies are using special sight and sound penetrating goggles to see and hear into Voodoo's room. The Blue Man Clan, or BMC, is an international anti-corruption organization founded and led by a being known as the Master. Now aware of Voodoo's plan, they radio to the Master's headquarters to warn her of potential destruction in the U.S. The Master notifies the leader of the Avenging League, Janus Gorkas, about the problem as well. An alert is forwarded to the current domain of the creator of the Leviathan Universe. Location. Logan, Utah, the realm of reality. Leviathan, the founder and namesake of the Leviathan universe, suddenly distracted from concentrating on data issues displayed on his laptop. 
The alert in Silent drew his attention to an image appearing on his screen and showing the words, Villain Alert. Dimascorcus also appears on the screen and says, Leviathan. There's a new mission. Voodoo is planning to make another attack on the United States. We have chosen you and Colossa to do the mission. Good luck. And transmission. And the screen went dark. On his laptop, Leviathan brought up a video call to Colossa, one of his most notable creations. Leviathan then said, Hello, Jamas Gorkis has directed us to stop Voodoo from annihilating the U.S. Colossa then said, Okay, Leviathan, but what's your plan exactly? He answered, Child's play. To begin with, we call in the BMC to use a nuclear death ray to destroy Voodoo's mountain tomb before she transports her armies to the target. However, if the armies escape the mountain, then our plan B will be to summon Hirikashix, Centaura, Silasa, Jacob Felixton, and Frostbite to do battle. Is that a reliable plan? Yes, it is, Colossa replied. Leviathan then says, All right, Colossa, I'll meet you there at your Murray Tower headquarters shortly. Leviathan then disables the video call and starts typing on his laptop to describe where he is to appear upon the default Earth, at Murray Tower. As he's typing, he projects an avatar of his mind and soul through the fourth wall to the Leviathan universe. In a realm of reality, he keeps typing as a means of controlling his Leviathan avatar, which is now on the other side of the fourth wall. Within the Leviathan universe... Leviathan appears as a dragon-like creature with the following features. A raptor-like head with a feathery structure that gets exposed when he gets a strong realization of something. A large pair of dragon wings that enable unaided flight. A long and prehensile ever tipped tail. Sharp claws and teeth. Reddish gold eyes with vertical pupils. Wearing a silvery suit of body armor and possesses a vast variety of personally chosen powers. Colossa then emerges from her penthouse in Murray Tower, and Leviathan appears to her a few seconds later. He then summons his fear bike, a hypersonic futuristic motorcycle that can fly on autopilot, can defy gravity, and has spike wheels as big as those of a monster truck, and starts flying to the next de destination. Meanwhile, Shannon, or Colossa, gets picked up by the BMC Sky, Sky Carrier a huge all-environment war machine capable of flight in the atmosphere, in space, and even underwater. The Sky Carrier flies to the central area of Voodoo's tomb, and after dropping Colossa off on a small hill nearby, moves off to await further direction to use its nuclear death ray to destroy the mountain. Leviathan was already on the hill when Colossa showed up. She decides to alter her normal size to a height of 6 feet 8 inches, but no taller to avoid getting caught. They then learn from the BMC spies that Voodoo's army had begun their transport through a pair of dark magic portals, meaning that they're headed for two different targets. Colossa uses a BMC communicator to request the Master to use the Sky Carrier's nuclear death ray to destroy the mountain. After the mountain was obliterated, she then requested the Master to pick her and Leviathan up with his fear bike to transport them to Washington, D.C. While aboard the Sky Carrier, they and the five other heroes of the group have some disagreements with Plan B. In her uncanny word usage, Hirikashik says, What makes you think any of those flipsy little loose girls think that I need to team up with Centaura? She doesn't have enough durability. Centaura stomped two of her horse hooves and replied, Excuse me, I'm nowhere close to being wimpy. If you truly think that I am, I'll just prove you miserably wrong by breaking all four of your arms. The master inter interrupted this and stated, Ladies, don't get your prejudices cause you to lose focus on the severity of this mission. We have to handle with this as a team. As they settle down, the master lays out the plan for the mission. In the meantime, Hirikashix and Santara were beamed down to the Lincoln Memorial in Washington, D.C., while Silasa, Jacob Felixson, and Frostbite were beamed down to the front entrance to Grand Central Station. In the Lincoln Memorial, Hirikashix and Centaur continued their argument. Hirikashix muttered, I can't believe the Master is forcing us to team up. I hope that Jamas Gorkas and the armies won't use this as something to taunt me with for the rest of my life. Over here in Hirikashix muttering, Centaur continued talking. 
Well, little do you realize, Tafora, is that not only am I the princess of Mythos, I'm also the daughter of a sphinx and a minotaur. So in that case, you stand corrected. Quickly, Heritashik said, Don't you go hee-hine and get him in my way, Centaura. It ain't wise. Centaura then countered her by saying, For the last time, Heritashik, I am not half donkey, I'm half horse, just with six legs instead of four. All right? The zombies and ex-soldiers spill from the black magic portal into the main hall of the Smithsonian Museum. After they gathered their ranks, the horde traveled to the Lincoln Memorial to begin their invasion, where Hirikashix and Centaura were waiting for them. Hirikashix attacked the zombies, swinging her twin McQuetal sword clubs with her upper arms and her lower arms to fire her twin handheld plasma ray guns. She also increased her size to 30 feet, giving her extra strength to smash and pummel the ones who avoided her sword clubs and plasma ray guns. Meanwhile, Centaura battled the enemies by trampling them with her six legs and great speed. She also slashed them with her twin Excaliburs and blasted them with her own twin handheld plasma ray guns. Hours later, the zombies and ex-soldiers laid in lifeless heaps everywhere. The Blue Man Clan moved in to clear the bodies and repair all the damage in the Lincoln Memorial. Meanwhile, in New York City, Jacob had a bit of anxiety with the task. He sighed and stated, I just hope that the battle at the memorial would be easily won, because my wife, Hirikashix, is on that team in D.C. Silasa, are you sure I could do this without her help? And Silasa replied, Well, Jacob, I'll promise you this. I may only be the android copy of Colossa, but it doesn't mean that I'm pathetic by comparison. I'm still powerful and deadly on any level. Frostbite then thought of his lover Ignisha, thinking to himself, I hope she'd be proud of me when I fight this upcoming battle. When Silasa, Frostbite, and Jacob Felixton arrived in Grand Central Station, Silasa started battling the zombies, and Frostbite took on the ex-soldiers. Silasa used the nuclear beams projected from her hands to fry the zombies and her mass alteration to grow much larger so she could stump, stomp, kick, and punch the zombies into bloody pulps. Frostbite used his powers to seal the exits and freeze the charging ex-soldiers, launching deadly shards of ice at them and dropping them from great house heights using the, his power to over air to lift them. Though he doesn't have any fighting skills, Jacob was luring the zombies and ex-soldiers to the general direction of Silas and Frostbite. Again, as in Washington, D.C., the main hall of Grand Central Station was littered with bits and pieces of zombies and ex-soldiers. The BMC was called to clean up the blood, bones, guts, and brains, while Jacob used his uncanny mechanic skills to repair all of Grand Central Station in just ten minutes maximum. When Colossa and Leviathan were being down near the reflecting pool in D.C., they saw Voodoo and Clay arriving from a horizontal portal in the pond that would take them close to the entrance to the U.S. Capitol building. To make the battle more even, said Colossa, you'll fiddle a round of Clay and I'll fight off Voodoo. To announce their presence, Leviathan threw his devil's Excalibur in a long arch that landed blade first into the ground, ten feet in front of Voodoo and Clay. Leviathan called back his weapon. Colossa tried to reason with Voodoo, saying, What are you trying to do this time, ma'am? Voodoo then replied, Are you really underestimating my power, Colossa? I'm going to dethrone the United States, in case you haven't figured it out. Colossa sneered and said, Yeah, we got that message already. Voodoo then continued, Well, it's my world, and I deserve to be its supreme ruler. I won't ever tolerate any kind of disrespect. And at that point, Colossa hit Voodoo with a solid nuclear beam to the face. Well, you want to start pissing me off, do you? You should always think twice before messing with me. And they immediately start fighting. Voodoo and Colossa both expanded to 25 feet. They punched and kicked each other all around the Capitol Mall. While they fought, the National Home News Station arrived to cover the fight. When they got to the reflection pool, Voodoo attempted to use her dark magic to construct a tsunami to topple Colossa. After getting soaked, Colossa gave Voodoo a solid bicycle kick to the face. 
Then Voodoo grabbed Colossus' feet, swung her to the ground in order to twist one of her legs. Colossus then used a random parry to trip Voodoo and threw some more punches, breaking her nose and giving Voodoo a black eye. Voodoo next projected a stream of flames from her mouth to set Colossa ablaze, then summon a chunk of rock to break Colossa's skull in it. Colossa dodged a stone and used her nuclear beams to strike at Voodoo's stomach, damaging her torso. Voodoo returned fire with dark magic beams and pushed back onto the nuclear rays from Colossa, creating a beam fight. Both combatants could tell that the beam fight wasn't getting anywhere, so Voodoo summoned another chunk of rock to hit Colossa in the back of the head dazing her for a few seconds and ending the beam fight. When Voodoo charged at Colossa to perform a finishing move, Colossa somersaulted over the witch doctor's head and struck her after landing. Now with a completely dazed Voodoo on her knees, Colossa altered her size into a good enough height to lift the Washington Monument and use it like a tree branch, smacking Voodoo in the face, leaving her groaning on the ground from all the searing pain. For the final strike, Colossa stomped on her damaged face, resulting in total defeat for Voodoo. Colossa looked upon Voodoo's face and spat onto it with disgust and walked away. Eventually, Goddess, Colossa's grandmother and ruler of the Alpha Gods, arrived and reduced Voodoo to her normal size, sealed her within a solid stone sarcophagus, and cosmically transported her to elsewhere. When Clay attempted to sprint to the U.S. Capitol building, Leviathan succeeded in tackling him. As they were wrestling on the grass, Clay grabbed his single-edged iron axe in an attempt to cut off Leviathan's arms. After dodging the deadly swings, Leviathan unsheathed his devil's Excalibur and tried to slash Clay back. After dodging the opposing strikes, Clay and Leviathan exchanged many blows, with neither getting the better of the other. Clay used his animation powers to bring some nearby trees to life to bind up Leviathan. Leviathan next used his Devil's Excalibur to slash the trees, rendering them inactive. Clay then gave him a neutering kick and attempted to kick the hero in the face. Leviathan was then able to summon his fear bike to ram Clay. While Clay was finally dazed, Leviathan bound his skull in a pair of constricting underwear to crush his head, and afterwards stripped Clay from his life force. Eventually, Goddess arrived to help the hero by transporting the unconscious Clay to somewhere. Else. After defeating Voodoo and her armies, Colossa, Leviathan, and the others were invited to the White House for a meeting with the current default Earth U.S. President, Lovely Liz. While there, a devoted Hirikashix had some sweet talk time with Jacob. I'm proud that you're brave enough to do your part, my cute little sugar berry, she told Jacob. And you did a good job with your work, too, as you always do, Jacob replied. While Hirikashix and Jacob were flirting, Frostbite and Ignisha, Ignisha were having their own love moment as well. Well, Ignisha, I hope I did well not getting carried away with my main goal of ending abuse. Rather, I gave my full attention to defeating the armies of Voodoo. And Ignisha happily replied, And I'm glad you didn't let the villainy side of your anti-hero personality take advantage of you. And as Leviathan says, There can't be chaos without paradise, my love. When lovely Liz arrived in the room, she spoke with them and stated, Congratulations once again, heroes. Me and my employees are pleased that you guys won yet another victory for the sake of this country. Colossa then replied, And we also thank you for having some integrity and gratitude yourself, miss. President lovely Liz next said, Yes, but there's one thing I still can't figure out. Where exactly did Goddess transport Voodoo and Clay? Symbol. Colossa answered. My grandmother took Voodoo to the bottom of the Mariana Trench and took Clay to the core of the South Pole. However, that doesn't mean that they are fully destroyed because all heroes must have their villains, and vice versa. Location, bottom of the Mariana Trench. In the depths, dark magic begins forming a crack that spreads across Voodoo's sarcophagus. The end. Well, I hope you enjoyed the storyline, and I hope I showed some emotion and comprehensibility for you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed my podcast so far. I've been trying all that I can to go viral some way, somehow, if viral's even the right way to put it. 
And if you guys want, you can like, subscribe, and comment down below. It's your choice. And once again, thank you, Grandpa Ho, for helping me make this story all those years ago. So you have credit to this video as well, too. Thank you. And I hope you guys have a fine rest of the, the month and such. And hope you guys have a fine time with everything else. And until next time, I'm Leviathan. Enjoy your time. Until next time, in transmission.